Hello, everyone. Welcome to Database Security Office Hours for April 2019. Our topic this month is masking sensitive data within a database. We'll be covering data masking from two different angles today. We'll talk about dynamic data masking, and we'll also talk about static data masking. Our goal is this is going to be the first of a two-part series on data masking. This month, we cover the differences between static and dynamic. Uh, we'll show you examples of how both work. Uh, we'll discuss appropriate use cases for them. Next month, our plan is to go deeper into masking formats and to take you beyond the basic use cases you normally see in demos or documentation into some of the really uh, complex and interesting things that we've seen our customers do. Masking, uh, as I think you'll see as we go through, is a very rich topic and there's no end to, to the nuances that can be involved in, in rolling this out and, and the things that you can do with it. Just a reminder that we do record these sessions, uh, so it's recording right now, and the recordings will be available on the Ask Tom page. Uh, usually it takes me a day or two to get them out after the session is done. Uh, what I do is we do two sessions each second Thursday. I'll uh, combine the question and answer into one, so we just have one video instead of two. That's why it takes uh, a day or so to get out. The Ask Tom uh, program is intended to give you a direct channel into your product development team, uh, database security, obviously, into the database security product development team. Uh, the idea is uh, really to have an office hours kind of concept where you can log on and ask, answer, ask questions you can't get answered somewhere else. Uh, we do also cover uh, any product announcements that are interesting for the month, and uh, we always try and have some technical content each month, this month, of course, data masking. For announcements, uh, the big one is we're still in the rollout for our database 19C. Uh, this is our long-term release. It's going to be supported through 2026. So if you're on 11G or 12C, this is probably the release you're going to be upgrading to at some point. Uh, database 19C is available now on Live SQL and Engineered Systems. It's available very soon. I was actually hoping we'd be out before this today's webcast, uh, but it'll be available very soon on Linux, Windows, and Solaris. Just keep an eye on edelivery.oracle.com. You should see it out there very, very soon. Other operating systems, cloud release, those are coming shortly after we have the, the Linux Windows Solaris release out. A lot of new features in 19C. If you were on last month, we talked about database fault simulation mode and operations control. A couple of months ago, we talked about unified audit and some of the new features in 19C for unified audit. And of course, we picked up the 18C feature, passwordless schemas, and we are now using those by default for the, uh, the preceded Oracle accounts. There's a couple of upcoming events I want to call your attention to. If you're in North America, particularly if you're on the East Coast, we have a series of cloud security days, and the database security team will be talking about autonomous database security. Uh, we're doing these 2, 7, and 9 May, and as you can see, it's Toronto, New York City, and Washington, D.C. If you're interested, it goes from 9 to 3.30, and the URL is on the screen for you now. And I know it seems like a long way away, but Open World is just around the corner. Open World San Francisco is just around the corner. Uh, we just finished up Open World Singapore a couple of weeks ago. Registration for Open World San Francisco is already open. Uh, call for papers and sessions has already closed, and the sessions are, are, are being selected now. The notifications should go out soon, uh, but we know we're going to have dozens of database security presentations, and we're also going to have four hands-on database security labs. For more information about Open World, go to www.oracle.com slash open world. That's it for announcements. I want to turn it over to Hakeem Lumai uh, for data masking and subsetting. Hakeem is the outbound product manager for database security in charge of field enablement. Uh, and what that means is he does a lot of education. He does a lot of, uh, of ivory tower type thinking. Hakeem is also here at Oracle well known as one of the, uh, the experts when it comes to masking. He's done some of our most complex implementations and uh, has really been a thought leader for us in this space for several years. So Hakeem, I'm going to pass. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and pass it over to you. So hi everybody, I'm very happy to uh, talk about uh, data masking today for you. So first of all, uh, what is it important is to to know exactly what is the difference between dynamic data masking and static data masking. Dynamic data masking is designed to secure sensitive data in real time. So in generally, it's for production environment. 
For, uh, for that, we have a product, a specific product uh, in Oracle called Oracle Data Reduction. Data is masked on the server, on the database server, before it reaches the application. Everything is embedded inside the inside the database, so you don't need a specific engine outside the database. For the static data masking, the product called Oracle Data Masking and Subsetting is used to create test and dev environments. It's very important to avoid the proliferation of the sensitive data in another environment than the than the prod. Sensitive data are replicated and updated with a new value without, without any possibility to retrieve the original data. It is very important to, uh, to make the difference between these two approach. So let's have a look on Oracle data reduction. This is a dynamic data masking. It's quite easy to understand the, the concept. You have an original data, and when you want to ask a sensitive data, you can apply a specific algorithm on that to avoid to expose your original data to a user who hasn't got any abilities to do that. So the engine is inside the database, and it's, uh, and it's um, uh, available from element J in Oracle. It's only for Oracle. And what is important to keep in mind, it's in real time. So the, the impact is near zero. You have a very, very less impact on your activity, but it's near zero. And you have no applica cha application changes required. It's very important because everything is inside the database, so you don't need to change anything on your application, and you don't need to rewrite your SQL code, for example. So why and when uh, do you need to redact? You need to do that to reduce sensitive data exposure for a production application, for example, but also if you want to be compliant with data privacy standards like, such as PCI DSS or GDPR and so on. You want you, you can use data redact if you want to have a minimal changes on your application and database. Because you can imagine to redact your uh, your data on the application, but it's always a, a tricky way because if you have another engine outside the database, you have a, a real risk to have a failure or to have a leaks. So how to redact? You, you have inside the, the uh, data reduction option, you have four algorithms. You have full, so it means each character of a value is are updated. Another value, partial, so you have a part, and only a single part of the, uh, the, the old value is uh, updated with another one. Regular expression, expression, you can choose the part that you want to redact. And random, it's similar, similar than full because each, each character of the value is randomly replaced by another one. So let's have a look in the demo, how it works and how we can use the data masking, uh, the data reduction, sorry, uh, 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 option. I made a, a video for that. So, welcome to this demonstration dedicated to data reduction, a specific feature from uh, advanced security option of Oracle database. To demonstrate that, I got a specific app called My HR Application. This is an application to display all the employees' information of my company. I log into this app, and I will display all the information of my employees. As you can see, we can sort it, and we can make a filter, for example, the employees' 
the employee crowd. And I got the information of that. Full name, employee type, position, location, and for example, email address, mobile, phone number, and so on. Now, I would like to be sure that all the sensitive data have been corrected secure. To do that, I can add a specific data reduction policy on specific colon of my tables. I will execute a query on the specific colon that I want to redact it. In my example, I'm connected on SQL plus and I got this query. I want to show the specific information from the table demo HR employees from employee search prod schema. And I would like to secure last name, first name, email, location, manager ID, position, and start date from this, this table. As you can see, for the moment, everything is available. Now let's have a look on the Enterprise Manager console to see if there is already a data reduction policy. So I choose my DB, CDB3, PDB1, and I go to the data reduction menu. I will be connected with SysDBA. And as you can see, for the moment, there is no data reduction policy. Now I will create a specific data reduction policy for those columns. I will do that for this column with this specific algorithm. So let's have a look on the console. I refresh it. And now, as you can see, we have this data reduction policy. We can edit it. We can see the different algorithm. You can edit one. And you can choose another one if you want from the specific algorithm, full, partial, regex, random, or not. And you can specify the pattern and all the setting values. As you can see as well, there is no context expression for the moment. It means this data reduction policy will be applied on each session, whatever you come from, from the official app or from SQL Plus, SQL Developer, and so on. Now, let's have a look on SQL Plus, what, did, what will happen. As you can see, I relaunch exactly the same query, and for the last name, first name, and all the sensitive column, everything is redacted. If I go back to my app, I click Search, and again, as you can see, everything is redacted. You don't need to restart. You don't need to reboot anything because everything is online and instant instantaneously applied. Each time you launch a new session, as you can see, all the information are, will be redacted with another value. Again, again. Now, I would like to add a context information. It means that I want to be sure that all the uh, application non-authorized, like SQL Plus, SQL Developer, and so on, will be redacted, but not for my official app, because I want to be sure that every information will be accessed only from my official app. For that, I will create a context value. So my former context was one egal one. It means this data reduction policy will be applied on every time. Now on my context, I had this specific context module GDBT in client. It means that all the connection from GDP, this GDP sync client will be correct, but not the other one. So go back to our console, refresh it, 
And as you can see, the context expression is there. Let's have a look. I will, I will be connected on SQL Plus, and I launch the query. And as you can see, all the information will be redacted. If I go back to my app and I click search, all the information are available. So this is very interesting, this uh, context, because, because you have more than 70 uh, variable, context variable, and you can use it, you can combine them if you want to have a, a specific environment to be sure that all your sensitive data have been, will be redacted. Now, imagine you want to be more secure for a specific column. You want to be sure that your policy will be stronger than a simple data reduction policy. You can add an expression. An expression means you can put another context value for a specific column. In my example, I got no expression information for the moment. I will create them for email. So for email and last name, I put, I created this expression, trusted app path, and I add to my module GDBT client another context value for uh, with IP address. I get a range of IP address. It means that if you are not in this IP address range, you will not see the right information from this both column. I refresh it on the console, and as you can see, it's applied for my email and last name column. If I refresh from my app, all the information is available except the full name, and if I click it, the full name and the email address. Is it important because in time of uh, theft uh, identity, you can prevent this kind of attack? Why? Because in SQL Plus, you can force, for example, you can force the session context. I will show you uh, an example. You are in SQL Plus with a non-authorized IP address. It means you have a data reduction policy. So as you can see, all my information will be redacted. But I can force the module, even in SQL Plus. So I can go to GDBT client module. I'm still in SQL Plus, but I can force it. And now, you, you see, I will in GDBT client module, always in IP address, uh, unauthorized, and still, you can see all my information are available now, except those with an expression, because I force it, it's stronger than a simple data reduction policy. Another point to keep in mind is the high privilege user. I'm still in SQL Plus with IP address unauthorized, and everything is redacted. Now, now I force the module, as you can see previously, for an IP address still unauthorized, and I got the information, and this very sensitive data will be redacted. And now, I will be connected in CSDBA, the super user of the database. I'm still in SQL Plus and with an unauthorized uh, IP address. But as you can see, all the information will be available, even with a data reduction policy, with a data reduction expression policy. Why? Because these users have except exempt exam privilege, especially this one exempt redaction policy. It means this user will not be constrained with this redaction policy. To prevent this kind of attack, 
you can use another feature called Database Vault. And you had a specific uh, demonstration last month from Alan Williams. And I will recommend you to see this demonstration to understand how it works and how you can prevent this kind of failure. This is the end of this demonstration. So now let's have a look on database, uh, data masking and subsetting feature. So this is a, a static data masking. For that, the concept is quite easy to understand. You have a source. Generally, this is a production. And you have a test dev, uh, test dev environment. The original data and the sensitive data are inside the production, inside the source. But when you want to refresh the test dev environment, you need to mask all of them, and maybe you need to subset the, the data. So the, the concept of the data masking and subsetting is to, go, to combine the two features, masking and subsetting. You have your data from a database, you apply an algorithm of masking and subsetting, and after that, you replicate the data, your, your non-sensitive data, in the test dev environment. It's very interesting because it's, um, you, you, you will avoid to, um, uh, to, you will avoid to, um, to have a proliferation of sensitive data in, an, an, in a test dev environment, and like that, you reduce the data exposure. For that, you need to discover the sensitive data before, and you need to, uh, to format, and you need to choose the right algorithm that you, that you want to use. With Oracle, you have two deploy, deployment options. First one is in database. So it means you have a database between, uh, just between your source and your target. So from your source, you replicate your, to your sensitive data to the staging database. In the staging, you apply the algorithm, so you operate the transformation here. And after that, you push all the new values in your target. So this is very interesting mode because you can minimize the impact of the source environment. And because you have a staging database, you can manage a heterogeneous environment. So imagine you can have a different engine from source to target. The second deployment option is in export. To do that, you have your source, and in your source, you apply the uh, the algorithm to generate a, an Oracle export data pump file, and from this file, you can push all the, your new data to any target that you want. In this case, it works only for Oracle. You have a very uh, the main the main point uh, very interesting of this method is that the sensitive data never, never goes out from the source. So you have an interest of each mod that you want to choose. What is very interesting to, important to, to keep in mind is the termino terminology. Source, this is the place, the database from which the data originates. So in general, this is the production database. If you are in the Oracle Data Guard environment, both, I mean primary and standby servers, are sources. For the staging, the staging is a database on which operations are performed. And the target, this is a database on which the, uh, the, the operations are not performed. This is only a storage without natively performing the masking and subsetting operation. You have different approach, always in two modes, in database and in export. 
The first approach is on-premises. So you can have source, staging, and targets on-premises. You clone your data to staging. You mask and subset inside the staging. And after that, you duplicate your, your data, your new value, in, into the target. For the in-export, you have the similar things in on, uh, on premises. You can imagine to do that in a hybrid, hybrid mode. So I mean, the sources and the staging databases could be on premises and your targets could be on, on the cloud. Same thing for in export to cloud. Another one is clone to cloud. This is for Oracle only. You can push your pluggable database directly into the cloud. And during the transfer, you will apply the algorithm. Also, you, you, can, um, you can, of course, do that directly into the cloud, source and target. And you can manage all of the operation with the console on-premises. Another way to do that you can use the DBS snap clone. In this case, you have your production environment and you replicate your application in real time, your, your data, sorry, in real time in a standby database. From this standby, you generate a test master database, mask before, because you have applied just before the algorithm, so you have a test master with new values. And after that, you can generate functional copies. And for each copy, you have different environments. So is it very, very useful for dev training or something else? Every, uh, every data that you don't want to update are still inside the, the test master because the test master is in read-only mode. But for each block that you want to update, you can store them inside the copy. Like that, you will have no impact on each other copies. If you want to drop, create, alter, anything, you can do that on your copies. The last approach is data masking factory. So data masking factory is not a product. It's a framework based on two products, data masking and subsetting, and Oracle data integrator. This framework allowed to interact between these two products. By this way, you can, use, you can have any, any sources on-premises or on the cloud, uh, RDBMS engine or NoSQL engine, even Hadoop environment, bus like uh, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, GMSQ, or complex file, XML, JSON, even app. You, re you replicate your sensitive data that you want to transform with ODI. So you replicate your data in a secure database called DMF Oracle DB. This is a staging database. This is an Oracle database. You apply your algorithm. And after that, you push all your data, all your new value in the new environment, any targets. It means it could be totally, completely heterogeneous. So you can imagine to push MySQL data, sensitive data, to, uh, for example, uh, QGMS or to a Postgre or to a NoSQL environment on premises or on the cloud. Whatever, whatever the method you want to use, you need to respect these four steps in the implement, implementation methodology. The first step is to create an application data model. In these steps, you will discover the sensitive data. Discover also the data relationship. It's very important because like that, you can work on 
which uh, which colon that you want to transform. This is only a metadata model, so there is no impact on the source DB. You never touch it and you never change anything on the source. If you need more relationship, you can add manually or you can add and discover automatically. The second step is to select the format and criteria for masking and for subsetting. For masking, you have uh, uh, Oracle provide many, many, many fake data and format library that you can use and different algorithm that you, that you can combine and also templates. And for the subsetting, you have the possibility to use condition where close, where closes, and you have a simulation mode if you want to test in real time. This is exactly the third part. This is a preview and validation. So you can see in simulation mode what the algorithm you use and what will be the result for masking and for result uh, for the subsetting. And the last step is the global execution. After the third step, you will generate a PLC SQL script. So that's why you, uh, you need to use a Oracle database. And after that, you can choose the mode of the execution in database or in export, as we have seen uh, before. If you have any problem, you can just you need just to restore your database, and you make you you make any change of your format and criteria, and you can preview again. And after that, you generate another script to apply it. For the ADM, to generate it, you can do that manually or automatically. And all this module will consume the result of this ADM. For the masking, you, you have masking format library with billions and billions of fake uh, data, like fake credit card number or social insurance number and so on. You have also different algorithm, and we will see that later during the demo. Like that, you can generate several use cases, like mask based on condition. For this example, you can see different country with different format, but I want to keep the format, but also I want to mask the, da the data. So you have different things, but you still you, you keep you still keep the format. You can also shuffle the record so you it will be able to keep the real data, the original data, but in another sort. You can also generate a deterministic uh, mode. So for my uh, AMP ID, for example, 324 Albert, in different database, HR or finance. I'm, I will transform it, but always with the same value. Three to four becomes Charlie, Charlie. It's based on hash, so that's why we can generate the same value even if we generate at different time. We can also generate random value, like that, to, but preserving format, like for this currency, dollar or yen. Dollar is on two digit and yen is on three digit, and I will update them, but I will keep the format. You have also the possibility to, uh, to mask the blobs. So it's very interesting if you want to search and replace uh, a word or a specific uh, strings inside an HTML page, for example. And you can do more than that because uh, you have a lot of combination or a lot of combinations. For the subsetting, you have three possibilities. The first one is based on the rows, the number of the rows. So you can reduce the size of the table with the number of the rows. The second one is based on the condition. Like here, I can, I can reduce only the volume because, uh, on keeping, keeping only the Asian uh, information. 
And the third one is based on the partition table. So you can keep only the partition that you want to, to keep. And like that, the volume is automatically reduced. In the subsetting mode, you have a simulation mode. And like that, you can see in real time what will happen after you apply a condition. In my example, I put a condition, a, a where clause on this table, edge order. I see the source size in terms of size and in terms of rows. And I will see after the application of this where clause, how many, how many megabytes I will have and how many rows I will have. And I can see what is a reducing percentage. It's very interesting because sometimes I have re, um, a referential table and I need to keep 100% for them. So I can force 100% for a for few tables and I can choose another percent for other tables. Here for the masking, you have the possibility to see in, in, in real time what will happen after the application of the algorithm. So it's very interesting. You don't need to wait for the end of the global operation to see if, it's, if it works or not. Finally, you can choose the mode in database or in export, and we will see that during the demo. We will both mode of that. It's very important and very interesting to use the latest um, version of OEM, Oracle Enterprise Manager, because you can leverage of the uh, storage and the performance. So that's why you, in the new plugin, we, we need to reduce the time and to reduce the volume. So now let's have a look on the demo. For that, I have always my application, but I got two databases. I got my application on production and I got my application on development environment. For that, I will log on on my production environment. And I will check the data. I will sort by HR ID. And I will do the same thing on my dev environment. So I check and I sort. And they are, they are exactly the same data in uh, production and in development environment. Now, I will import, to be more efficient, I will do that by script. I will import my ADM and my masking definition. So I will, I will go back to my console. I will connect it to my console. Here it is. So, I will always use CDB3 PDB1. And I want to, I will go to the application data model menu. And I have created right now, you see this DMS underscore ADM dash demo. So this is this one. And you can see all the process from production to target database. You will generate first, first of all your ADM, application data model. And after that, you can define your data subsetting and data masking uh, script algorithm. And you will generate a global script and you will apply it for, uh, to generate the test environment. So let's have a look on this ADM. I will connect with my CDBA user. So you have three parts. The, the first one is all the object. So you can, uh, you can retrieve all the object of the, the application. You can add automatically or you can add uh, manually. So I import 
uh, uh, content from an XML file. So it's very interesting if you want to be fast and efficient, more efficient. The second part is the relationship, uh, the referential relationship. So you can see the, uh, the constraint, the foreign key. And if you need to add more, you can add here very easily. Or you can do that by script if you want. And you can uh, do that uh, automatically with a discover job. So like that, you can uh, improve your, mod your relationship model and without, without any impact on the production. Because everything that you see here is stored on the OEM repository and only that, only here. And the third part is the sensitive column. I choose only the column that I estimated uh, there was a very, very sensitive data. Because when you mask, uh, when you mask all your data in a database, you don't do that for every column. You do that only for your sensitive data. So that's why here I can choose manually, so I can add here, or I can import from XML. That's what I did with my, my script. And you can also generate a, a discovery job. So this is an automatic engine based on different sensitive column type. Here, Oracle provides you a different uh, sensitive column type, email ID, ID address, for example, and so on. But you can add your own sensitive column type. And you will, uh, you will scan the information uh, based on column name, column contain, comment, and column data. You can use a, regu a regular expression to scan your data. And you can, on data sample, from 10 to uh, 1,000 rows. So here, now I will create it. A, defini a data masking definition. So I get nothing for the moment. And with my script, I will import an XML file here based on credit card number, name, phone number here. So it's created. If I refresh here, I got my demo, uh, my masking definition. I can open it. with my, always with my CDBA user. And you can see the different column that I want to mask and how I want to mask. You, are, you remark that here, phone number, this one, is disabled because when you have this symbol, this part is, um, you have no algorithm on that. So that's why I prefer to disable it. And I can and I can enable that what I want. For example, I can see the email ID. You see the different algorithm that you want to use. You can add condition if you want to make a different part of your mask. Here you put your wear clothes, and you can add different algorithm from a released fixed number, fixed string, or random shuffle, substitute, substring. If you want to use different information store in the table column, you can truncate. But you can also use a SQL expression or your own function. So you can create a, a, a package, for example, or you can use regular expression as well. For example, I can use fix, I can add. And here, I will put that on this condition. And the default co co condition is the other one. And now I can choose and I can see the, the application of the algorithm of the data. Here, you can import from the format library. So for my example here, I got nothing. But, but if I choose, for example, this one based on the credit card number, I can import. And here, you can choose from the billion unique fake information provided by the engine on the American Express, MasterCard, Visa, and so on. 
So this is my, uh, my script generated here. You can see a, a package. I can use a package and I can combine different algorithms if I want. Okay. When it's done, you will generate the script. So for the moment, I got nothing, no, no script generated, but I want to mask seven columns. I will generate the script. First of all, I will do that in mask import, import in export mode, sorry. I will choose my DMS admin user. This is a specific user with a specific privilege to generate the, the masking. I will follow the execution. Here. So in this step, I will generate the script. And after that, I will execute the job to generate the export data pump file. So now I just need to generate it. Okay, everything is in succeed. I can close it. I go back here and I refresh it. And now the script is generated. Is generated. I will schedule the job because I want to generate the export done file. To do that, I select in export. I select my in uh, my directory, my uh, database uh, data pump export directory. I will take this this name for my script here. And for my log, I will uh, select the Oracle Unix user to put the, the, the file on the server, and I will choose the DMS admin user. I submit it, and I follow the execution. So this part takes, in general, two minutes. So during this time, I will uh, talk about the, the, this, uh, this screen. So you have different parts in this screen. You can follow the execution in real time here, and you can choose the auto refresh here. You have the possibility to stop the steps if you want to, uh, to resume or if you want to fix something. Here you can see the different uh, sum up uh, part of the execution. So the the job starts from uh, from here. Yes, from here at this time, and the elapsed time is over there. Okay, 45 seconds for the moment, and so on. You can also choose different action if you want to suspend, stop, debug, or delete the job. You can edit it. You can view the definition, and you can here make a filter of the running or the succeeded uh, operation. Always to, to have a, a complete view of the execution. And here you can see the different, uh, uh, the, the different task that the operation do that, did that, did, sorry. And here you can download your output log on your computer if you want, on your client customer, uh, your, your client PC. Here, this is almost the end. I know that because it's less than two minutes in general on this part. And we, we can see also this directory where I will put the, the information, so LL on that. And you, you will see all the SQL scripts and also the dump generated. Before the execution, I, I was nothing. And now I got my SQL files and I got also my DM, my, my dump, export data pump dump. So is in succeed. I can close it. I can refresh it here. And I see my job, my mask job is succeeded. And now if I do exactly the same query, I get my dump generated. 
Now I will import it on my uh, dev environment. So I will use the file generated in the directory that I uh, put before. So it will be import on the dev environment. Here I make I make a remap from search pro to search search dev with the new values. And I will replace and I will replace the table. It's it's a down, it's done, sorry. And if I go to the app, so remember in production, I have I had the same data and now if I refresh and I sort, I got different information. Remember the uh, uh, HR ID Jensen 2 and the HR2 is now Galbasi Ruby. If I choose it, of course, all the information uh, as mask, masked, and now the email address is different. If I choose the ID2, and I see the email, the email is different than the dev. So now it was the in, uh, in export mode, and now I will show you the in database mode. So for my demo, I will transform the production database information. So I just need to generate another script, nothing else, because I just want to choose a different way. So in database, and I will choose also my DMS admin user. I will follow my execution. Okay. And I will generate the script that I want to use. So this is a PL, PL SQL script here. You can see the difference. Okay, 26 seconds. It's succeeded. Now, if I go back here and I refresh it, I will see script generated. And now I will execute the, the job to transform the information. So I check in database mode and I need to select this case because uh, you have to, uh, to, to, pay, uh, to pay attention of that. You selected target is not a production database. Okay, for my example, this is a production, but in the real life, you, you, make, you pay attention of that. Here, I will choose the destination. I will choose the destination of my uh, of my script. So I will put this one here. Here, and I will put into the O4 in database. So there is nothing for the moment. I will take this directory. I will put that here. And I will choose Oracle Unix user and DMS user with a specific right. OK. And I submit it. So in this state, first of all, I will generate the script onto the server. And after that, I will execute the script. So I will generate it. I will write on this part, so LL, you have seen, the scripts are there, and now I will execute them on the production database in my, in my demonstration. So if I do that, okay, is it succeeded? And if I come back, go back to my uh, production, remember uh, 224 uh, Bossman, uh, 187 uh, Bonstra. If I go back search and I click search, I have different 205 is both in, and I can, you remember two was Jensen and now is Mugworth and so on. And the email is different also. So it's very easy, quite easy to, to use uh, data masking uh, module. And 
I want to go back to the presentation to finish by tips and tricks. So to use uh, data masking and subsetting, it's not a complex uh, tool, but you need to always be well prepared. Be comfortable with data masking and subsetting. You need to read the docs, make exercise, and of course, you need to have a, a, a practice level because it's, it's important to know what you can do with this tool. Uh, but it's not only a technical tool. Uh, you need to make sure you have the right people because uh, the majority, the major part of uh, masking, uh, masking project is on the analyst and application architect side because they are only the right, uh, the right people to determine if this is or not a sensitive data and if you need to mask or you need to transform them and how to do that. So it's very important to um, to make a, a project with the right people. After that, pay careful attention to the web browser because sometimes you have um, you have bugs with uh, certain with few plugins, and uh, install the last version of OEM. Like that, you will be able to um, to to leverage the the capability of the new plugin and of the new features inside the, the console. And of course, be, be sure you have always the backup of the database because if you want to go back to the algorithm or the condition for the subsetting, it's important to restore the database at uh, each time you need. And the last one, the last tricks that you can use is to use a common line, EMCLI, uh, like, I, like I did on my demonstration, and use the XML files because it's very, very easy and you can reduce uh, extremely uh, the, the project time. If you have any trouble, uh, you can see the troubleshooting, uh, troubleshooting and frequent problem section on the documentation. We update it uh, uh, in regularly. To summary, I, I want to be sure you keep in your mind all these important points of data reduction and data masking and subsetting tools. These, these tools uh, um, uh, allow to accelerate your compliance with different uh, private data privacy standards. You have no coding and adaptation needed for your applications. It is very important. You don't touch your SQL application or your uh, uh, Java application and so on. You don't change anything on the database. It's easy to deploy, to exploit, to manage. This is robust and proven solution because we use that all around the world and for many different domains and many different uh, um, environments. The learning curve is very low because as you have seen, it's very easy. After two days, you, you, know, uh, you know exactly what are the features, how to use the console. It's very easy. And the common line, you have not a lot of, uh, you have not a, a lot of vocabulary or syntax to, to know because it's very easy. And like that, you can reduce, extremely reduce the project duration from months to weeks. So, Thank you for, uh, for your uh, attention. And if you want to, to ask any question, we are, that, uh, we are there for that. Thank you. I will give you the end, uh, Russ. Thank you, Hakeem. All right, everyone, before we get into Q&A, just uh, uh, another reminder. Uh, next Ask Tom is Thursday, May 9th. That's the second Thursday of the month. And we're going to continue with the topic of data masking, static data masking, and we'll be delving into advanced masking formats. Hope to see you there. There were a lot of questions that came in over chat. Let me just get those up real quick. And Akeem, I tried to answer what I could as we we're going on, but there were a few of them we wanted to leave for you. Uh, yeah. Let's see. 
Uh, AKS asked if we could cover under what scenarios app, app changes would be required. I answered that one example of a change might be if you needed to pass context information from the application to the database uh, for redaction to make decisions on. What other cases can you think of where they might need to make application changes to use redaction? Mm. Oh, uh, you mean for the data redaction? That's right. That's right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Is it possible to, you, you can do that in physical, but uh, to do that, you, you need to, uh, to be sure that your uh, synchronization is always uh, available. So I mean, uh, if you generate a script for the physical, you know, it's not like a logical, so you will not apply the script, you will not apply the query, you will apply only the block. So it's not, um, uh, um, I, I, I will check to do that because it's extremely different uh, compared physical and logical. Okay. So I think yeah. there you were asking the question about is it possible to apply dynamic redaction on a physical standby database? The one right before that, Hakeem, uh, AKS had asked what type of app changes might be required. Uh, and that's where I'd asked, answered that uh, you might need to change the application if it had to pass context information. Um, I guess if you had forms that were doing write back, you might have to create read only forms. I think you covered that in your presentation. What other cases would you need to change an application before you could use redaction? Mm, in your context, you mean? Uh, you, you, you can do, uh, change your IP or domain, your uh, uh, different things in in the, in the context. You have so many things. We have uh, seven seventy six uh, contexts uh, viable environment that you can change and you, you can use. So it's tricky to to answer to to, to this question. But uh, you have very very a lot of a lot of uh, different variable to use. I will send you the the page to uh, uh, with with all these context variable if you want. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And uh, next question was from Prasag, who asked about uh, around white papers. And I'd mentioned there are a few white papers, but as you'd said a little bit later on, folks, the uh, the documentation is the place to go. Oracle documentation today is not like it used to be. We we update it all the time. Uh, so if if we get a question in, or if we get a use case that is going to be common, then we're putting that into the docs and you'll see a lot of scenario based stuff in the documentation. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, another question came in. Is there any way to audit redaction uh, the way we can with database faults? Like when a, a, a policy fires, is there a way to audit it? I couldn't find anything. No, exactly. Okay. You can, uh, yeah, yes. So I'd made You the, can use, uh, sorry. I was just saying, I, I made the answer. Um, that's actually a great suggestion. I'll put an enhancement request today to, to add that in uh, to unified audit because there's, I can see a lot of demand for auditing redaction. Yes, you, you can see inside this uh, unified auditing, but uh, um, I'm, uh, I, I, it's not. It's not due to. It's not for that, because it's not a real operation for the the redaction. This is only a last operation during the uh, uh, execution plan. It's not a real, real. Uh, uh, it's not a real uh, transaction. Oh, I see what you're saying. So because it's enforced after the query is already done, it may not be able to fire an audit. All right. Exactly. We'll, we'll exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a, a question about someone who had reported that scheduled reports weren't masking, and the question is, is why? And there, I really couldn't answer. Uh, I brought up that, you know, if they're a DBA, they might have exempt redaction policy. The, uh, the person asked questions said no, uh, and in that case, my response was more than likely the policy didn't cover the specific use case. So when it doesn't redact the way you want it to, you've really got to look at the policy and see if maybe in your logic, you've got a hole in your logic. Uh, there was a question yes, yes. or a comment from Parag about uh, PeopleSoft databases in particular and masking templates with no primary and foreign key relationships. 
I think you covered that, didn't you, application defined masking? Yes, yes, yes. We have uh, for the application business suite, we have that. We have some plates on that. No, so but, we're talking uh, about uh, databases with no foreign key relationships. Where the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There is yes, you are, you are, you, there is no no foreign key, but you can add it. Right. So you can add, again, you can add that manually, uh, or you can allow data masking to search for the relationships. Just the only caution I'll give you is if you tell it to search for relationships, make sure you you double check what it finds because at that point it is it it, it is testing column names and and column types and such, and it may or may not find valid relationships. But it'll certainly give you a head start. Uh, AKS asked a question that we see frequently with the drip with redaction, whether or not we could base um, redaction policies on data values. And my answer there is no, we can do it on environment variables, uh, things like that, but we can't redact based upon a policy. And let's see, there was another question, are table size and conditions based, uh, oh, for subsetting in logical export mode? Um, I, I think, Hakeem, that what the question is there is, is there any limit yeah. size of the table? Oh, no, no, there is no limit, but uh, here, you, you mean, you mean uh, for the condition of the subsetting? Is it, is it correct? I don't understand really the, the question. The, the question is, uh, and AKS, feel, please feel free to elaborate. What was put into chat is, are table size and condition based SS for logical mm -hmm. export mode? Uh, I presume SS is subsetting. I think, uh, I hope so, yeah. So the, the way I read this is uh, AKS is asking, can we base subsetting on number of rows? Mm. Yes, number of rows, yes, you can do that, yeah. Okay, I know you can do percentage. You can say like 10%, can you say only 100 rows? Exactly, exactly. Uh, you, you cannot enter the number of the rows, but you can choose a percentage of the, of the number of the rows. And that's why after you, you can check on the simulation part mm -hmm. and you can see if the number of the rows is close to uh, the, the, the number that you want. Okay. Thank you. Did that answer your question? It would be for both. It would be whether you were doing physical or export extraction. He asked whether that's... Uh, exactly. And that takes us up to all of the questions that were entered in chat. We're about 10 minutes over, but uh, if there are other questions, please feel free to enter them into chat or just unmute and ask your questions. And no further questions at this time. Let's give it just a couple of minutes. So folks, if you do have questions, please uh, either unmute and ask them, put it into chat. And if not, I hope to see you next month for the, uh, the, the follow-on session on advanced masking formats.